Welcome to part three of my discussion of Viacom, CBS, uh, Paramount, and how three companies, the two guys, uh, just, uh, messed up Star Trek badly. So we had just left off with discuss discussing the mergers between Paramount, Viacom, and CBS, and the two tools, Summer Redstone and uh, Les Moonves, who basically, to either lack of caring or hate, uh, let Star Trek go bad from 1993 to 2005, in 2005, we mentioned that that, let, that Redstone, in, to facilitate his personal greed, because, uh, instead of firing one dude, um, decided to split uh, CBS into his CBS holdings to two companies: CBS and a reborn Viacom, Viacom 2.0. And where he basically messed up uh, was the, was with other franchises besides Star Trek. When Star Trek got hit bad, he he. CBS became a holder of these what are called the slow growth assets, meaning things that make money over time but don't have high profit growth, and high pro high uh, high like grow like have bursts of money basically, things like that. Uh, those high high rate growth, high short term growth. That's what one of the drives your stock prices. Having assets that give you money over time, also have a metric ton of them, uh, that doesn't impress stock investors. Where and. Viacom became the holder of the assets that generated high short-term growth, and the idea was that they would use Viacom to buff the, the uh, national amusement stock. At least that would seem like it from what I read through at the time. And how did this affect Star Trek? Well, Star Trek movie rights, were, Star Trek teen rights were considered slow growth, so they all got put into the CBS company. Uh, Star Trek movie rights were all considered high growth, so Viacom got those, meaning Viacom and their subdivision Paramount Movies. And since Moonves either hated or didn't care about Star Trek, and Redstone hated and care about Star Trek, the complex legal rights that arose from the say one franchise being split this way um, began to mess things up. Um, to give you some of the rules that were followed, they had to follow, um, neither company could have anything new to Star Trek without the other company's permission, even on National News on both of them. Uh, uh, Moonves and... Um, Preston were competitive and probably disliked each other, so there was very little agreement between the two companies. Uh, so, for example, no new ships could be created uh, or named, no new crew members could be named, and so forth, without both companies agreeing they could be part of Star Trek. CBS had the complete TV rights for Star Trek, of all Star Trek, for free, forever. So if, if, if Viacom made a Star Trek movie, when the TV when it came time to put it on TV, CBS it was automatically going to be some CBS, something CBS had the control of, to uh, make long-term growth money, because it was the TV rights for, for Star Trek was considered a slow growth, was considered a low growth option, so it was left to CBS. Um, so Viacom lost in the, uh, prior to the advent of streaming any means of making money from the Star Trek movies besides broadcasting them. Uh, basically, were all CBS's rights. CBS, right? Uh, CBS right had the rights to distribute Star Trek home media, meaning if you bought a Star Trek movie. Movie on DVD or Blu-ray, you were buying it from CB, uh, uh, CBS, not from Viacom, even for a Star Trek movie. Most of the merchandising rights for Star Trek, like figurines and whatever, again considered slow growth, were with CBS, uh, with CBS, and not with Viacom. CBS had the right to make TV shows ba based on any movie without, as long as they changed nothing from the movie. Uh, so if if if, for example, um, Viacom got permission to make a movie about a, a new Starship, what's called the 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 star, the starship uh, Inquisitor, let's say, about an intelligence operation with seven new crew members. CBS agreed to that, and CBS had the permission to use those characters and move and ship and uh, ship in a TV show without Viacom's approval or getting or having to give any money to them. You know, CBS had the video game and book rights for almost all of Star Trek. Um, essentially, all the agreed upon, all the existing characters created with. Uh, and so any use of the existing character ships and names had to be given by both for either to use them as well. Okay, although there's a little qualifier to that which J.J. Abrams took advantage of. Um, while and while the above was also true for CBS and the data get approved from Viacom, CBS had so many of the distribution rights from the stuff that it didn't inhibit them. Basically, you know, and to establish any new rights like streaming rights or rights in new concepts like, uh, for example, something that's been happening in the last five years. Companies are licensed Star Trek designers to make 3D models and things like that. 
um, both companies had to A, agree to the rights that the other company could have them and had their own contracts related to them. So, you know, th this complex set of issues basically derailed Star Trek once from 2005 forward. In, uh, you know, as bad as Redstone Trek was in 2093 forward, 2005, it got even worse. Um, and, you know, and then finally, uh, in 2016, uh, Summer Redstone, for reasons I'm not going to go over here, um, he w was replaced in National Amusement by his daughter, uh, Sherry Redstone, who re finally realized that Star Trek and somebody can make them a lot of money, and that these broken up with Star Trek and other franchises was bad, so she went to a long fight to remerge Viacom and CBS under one company, which was Vi uh which was Viacom CBS, uh, the name, the parent company's name, and uh, they eventually became Paramount Global recently, which was this article, meaning the fourth company for the media, for the movies and whatever is Paramount Global. The parent company, Viacom CBS, will own them and own other side companies that do, like, video games and books and whatever, you know. Um, and that is where Star Trek stands today. Um there are other problems with Star Trek. We have the we have, you know, as I mentioned before, we have the Redstone era Trek, which basically is um, the the Abrams Trek, which were the three movies, and then the spinoff of the Abrams Trek, uh, which was done by not Abrams Company but with Abrams Concepts, which is Discovery and whatnot. And the problems with those franchises are things that beyond the scope of this video and uh, more political and political disputes rather than financial incompetence of uh, Summer Redstone and Les Moonves. Um, there is a Star Trek IV announced, uh, meaning a fourth movie in J.J. Abrams films, which now that the rights are all back in one place, uh, that's what this mentioned, J.J. Uh, Abrams planning to do another film. Whether you like that or not, I don't know. Um, I do have a link to a sort of an article which will be below governing what the, some of the complexity with J.J. Abrams' Star Trek and why he left it, you know, and why he uh, didn't produce Beyond but didn't have much to do with, with the construction of it and so forth. I'm not going to argue whether th these four movies are good or bad. I'm just saying there is mild hope for Star Trek now that all the rights are in one place. Uh, thank you for listening. This has been Unbearable, Matt at Unbearable, Unbearable 73. Um, if you like it, hit a like. If you dislike it, uh, um, hit the dislike. Subscribe if you if you would love to. Uh, read, you know, and let it let it know if you want. Think everyone should know about my content. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.